Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we worship you, we adore you this day for giving us this moment to gather and celebrate. Celebrate your presence and our gathering together as you gather us to remind us who you are as a God who provides, who sustains, who, who gives, and who is alive and not just here, life eternal. You have invited us, Lord, to seek first your kingdom. And the rest of the things that we worry about will be added unto us. And in the kingdom, Lord, you have called us into the abundance of the resources that you have and are willing to share. So, God, as we listen to your word, speak to our minds and our hearts and increase generosity in us as we look forward to share from the resources that are yours, but also to give away to others who need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please let us be seated. I take this opportunity to greet all of us in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Today we are talking about the kingdom and resources. And one of the greatest resources God has given us is the resource to be in good health and have joy and share joy. So let's take for a moment joy as our resource. And I invite you to turn to your neighbor. And I know a smile is one thing that is very contagious. Can you just turn to your neighbor and smile at them? And you'll find out how they can, they can smile at you. And say, praise the Lord. Welcome them. As Anteni Sana, thank you very much. Today the provost has arranged, and uh, as I was listening, the chair of ASK read from Hebrews uh, how God beautify his things with flowers and every good thing. Today around me is beautified with bread. And uh, I'm trying to look at the colors. Uh, it's not as glittering as it should be with the flowers and the colors, but it's very nice smell. It's not good for this hour, because when the stomach is hungry, then uh, you are tempted to look this side or that side. And Provost, you have surrounded bread with me, so I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to speak, but uh, I'll try. Uh, today is a great day for us to gather here to share God's word, to share our lives together, and to bring our resources to share together. We want to welcome uh, the ASK group. Thank you for being with us and for choosing this cathedral. Because there are many churches you could have chosen to celebrate and to bring your uh, uh, thanksgiving, but you chose this cathedral. We want to thank all those who are partnering with you, who are here. We want to thank those who have made this day a colorful day, our children from various schools. We want to thank the police and the prison bands who are with us. We want to thank all the members who are gathered so that the Lord will bless each one of us together. And because of many visitors, my name is Jackson Elizabeth. By the grace of God, I'm the Archbishop of the Anglican Church. And above that, the Lord Jesus is my Savior. I thank this God for this day. I said we are going to discuss about the kingdom and the resources. Our theme this year as a cathedral is, uh, as we see here, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And uh, we have been discussing week after week aspects of the kingdom. And I want today uh, us to reflect about the kingdom and resources that God brings to uh, not just our attention, but to our support and our usage. Resources are all that we require to make life better and meaningful, to impact life for sustenance, and to make life continue. We have heard from Genesis chapter 1, the very first creation story, where the Bible records how it happened and when God put everything in order that was formless and void, 
has no sense of direction, that which was dark with the light of his presence, he began to make the formalities that form our world today. He, he separated waters and the dry land. He, he made sure there is soil, there are rivers, there are forests and plants, animals to share, and finally making man after his own image and likeness to look after. I like the title given to one of the leaders of ASK, the steward. Because you have been called to steward God's resources. So we all are stewards of that resource. And from the reading read to us in Genesis, man was given that responsibility to subdue the earth, to look after every other animal and plant, to use them for food and for his comfort, but not to deplete and destroy, but to keep and multiply as he multiplied himself. So, so the garden story, the, the creation story, is a story to keep and manage for multiplication for generations to come, not only for our own time and moment. And that's how uh, God has fueled his creation as a self-regenerating, replenish, replenishing uh, uh, created order. If you look at uh, the narration in Genesis, animals are given, and animals, like other living beings, are animals which are seed-bearing for multiplication. The introduction of plant is God give every seed-bearing plant because plants depend on seed to grow and germinate and multiply and replenish and regenerate new ones and make creation a progressive, self-replenishing uh, uh, create, created order. So God looked at his creation in terms of the resource base that each will interdepend on the other and each becomes a resource to the other. So relationships became very important in this beginning imagination where God put order the things he wanted them to be ordered, relationships, things that interdepend on each other so that each other uh, look upon the other as a resource to be uh, utilized for the benefit of the other. As you also benefit when you benefit, you also benefit what is benefiting you. That was God's idea. So we are going to look at this subject matter in terms of material resources, physical, that God has made natural for us. We are also going to look at spiritual resources as uh, uh, explained to us by Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, but also by Paul in Ephesians, as you have read it. We are also going to look at other resources, resources that are internal to us, resources that are in it with the very values and virtues that God has given us, resources such as intellect and knowledge, creativity, resources that govern us as we gather together, the resource of love and sharing, all these aspects become resources. So let me try to uh, identify some of these resources God has given us so that when you are bringing to give thanks to God, we shall be able to know which resources are at our display, what God has given us. So in Genesis, the natural resource base was counted and identified. Every animal creeping, walking under the face of the earth, under the sea, is a resource. The water, the dry land, soil, trees, plants of every nature are all resources given by God. In these resources, which are physical, are also other hidden resources. The resource of oxygen and carbon dioxide and how it all interplay. When plants take carbon and give us oxygen, it, it creates an interdependent relationship that uh, we need to sustain and to grow and thrive together. The plants need soil, and not only soil as we see it, but the nutrients that are found in the soil. Some resources are on the surface of the earth, some are hidden under the surface of the earth. I went to a community where 
the Ministry of Water gave them a borehole and sang a borehole. And the immediate response of the people who uh, saw the water for the first time gush out of the ground, which has always been very, very dry, was, you mean God has always hidden this water here? And it has always been here? And it has always been very dry and we are always dusty? And God has hidden something precious such as water here? So God has put some resources above the earth, some inside the earth. Some identifiable easily, some we continue to discover, and discovery has not ended. That's why we need innovation every day, because there are still billions of resources God has put in planet Earth no man has ever discovered. So natural resources are enormous and immense, and God has provided them, and he said to man, it is for you to subdue, to sustain, to replenish, to grow them further and make them grow and increase and multiply. Beside that, God has given us spiritual resources. When Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, it came as a backdrop of a story he was telling. And he raised a very interesting question. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you eat and what you put on as clothes. You know, for, for a long time, you, you struggle with these words. How can Jesus say, don't worry with food? I mean, how do we survive without it? Is it possible? Is it real? Is it going to be, uh, is it doable? How about clothes? When he said, don't worry what you put on tomorrow, does it mean that uh, he, he's encouraging us to go back to the Garden of Eden and be like Adam and Eve before they were clothed, which came after the fall. What does Jesus mean? Don't worry about food. Don't worry about what you eat. But seek ye first the kingdom. As I read deeper into these words and ask this pertinent question and try to look from others who commented on this chapter, I realize what God is saying. Don't struggle for they don't belong to you. It is me who provide. So that's how he, he brought very fast the, the analogy of the birds of the, of the field. They don't grow, they don't plant, they don't prepare land, they don't grow any tree, but they enjoy every fruit in the forest. Who has made it possible? God, because he cares. And Jesus says, if God cares the birds, how about you who he created after his own image and likeness? Then he, he went on and said, if you are caring about clothes and beauty and, 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 and you are so concerned about which version has come, the latest one, look at the lilies and the flowers in the field. They are beauty. Look at the butterfly. It's beauty, naturally made. No human has ever matched that kind of beauty. Even with the best linen, even with the patterns that we can create, even with the, uh, with, with the latest version, we have never. He said, even Solomon is in his splendor and display of wealth, he was not able to create even something that much, one flower in the garden. So he says, the thing that we worry belongs to God and he owns them, he has them and he's going to give them because he cherishes you and me. So, so Jesus is turning our, our minds that uh, instead of worrying too much about the physical resources, worry about the spiritual resources, the presence of God with us. And Paul dwelt on this in Ephesians chapter 1. He talked about the spiritual resources, how God in Jesus imagined the salvation of the world, imagined how to forgive sin, imagined how to cleanse us and adopt us as his children, not for two days, not for one season, not for a lifetime, but for eternity. God made it possible that we can now march beyond the present world and join him in the spiritual kingdom of the Father. So God is speaking about the physical kingdom and the world and the display of the physical kingdom, but beyond that lies the spiritual kingdom of the Father where Jesus came to give and deliver. By him, 
being the sacrificial lamb to pay the price of sin, which the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But he who trusts in him, death is replaced with life. And in Christ, it is all made possible. This spiritual gift and uh, resources are to be governed by this great love of God, which elicit in us an opening of the deeper resources that we normally don't understand. The mind God has given us is not ours. And when God begins to bless the resources spiritually, he blesses our minds to be able to see things that we have never been able to see before. He enables us to discover things. He enables us to grow in knowledge and innovation. He enables us to grow in technology. He enables us to, 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 to develop things that takes us beyond the normal physical realm of this earth that we see. He enables us to manipulate material things and matter and create things that are higher, of higher value. But still, nothing has been created by man can match the depth of the resources God has for each one of us spiritually. The greatest that uh, we all have been promised is the salvation of our souls, the release of our souls from damnation and destruction to eternal peace, the joy of being in the presence of God forever and ever. The salvation of our physical and natural and uh, spiritual environment is what God has promised. So when God has given us both the physical and the spiritual resources, he calls us to become good stewards. Stewards who can discover more, who can increase more, who can make it better, who can multiply. But what will have become of man? Man, instead of growing and multiplying, has become a depleting animal. And one person I was reading his book, uh, the topic is the wealth of the nation says, by definition, man has grown to become a maximizing animal. A maximizing animal. He maximizes what he finds across. That's why when you get a piece of land, you begin with one acre, you yearn for five, and when you get five, it's never enough. You yearn for ten. When you have ten, you yearn for a hundred, and a hundred is not enough. When you have a thousand, it's still not enough. Because we are a maximizing animals. We want to maximize whatever around us. Selfishly guarding it, it doesn't belong to anybody else. It is all mine. And the greatest wars of the world are wars around resources. And you know what? God has put enough resources everywhere. But because we can only see a few, we fight over the few. We fight over water, pastures. We fight over anything that we see without knowing that God has eaten more and is leading us to discover. God has placed resources wherever he has placed his people. Even in the desert, there are still resources. Have you ever seen that? Even in the desert, there are resources. That's where God hid a lot of oil that people are now running to. Kenyans are running to Turkana. Despite the fact that Turkana, you don't get a lot of agricultural land. But now speculators are out to buy more land in Turkana, isn't it? Even us Nairobians, people who live in Nairobi, are now the ones who are going to displace Turkana people because of oil. When God has put resources, wherever he has put, it is for our own good and sustenance. And all what he's telling us, develop them and share. So after de developing, God asks us to deploy. Deploy the resources God has given you. Thank you, SK, and the cathedral, and all of us, for making this day a day that we are bringing those resources so that we can deploy them, give them away, share them out. The problem with humanity is that we can only share with those whom we expect something back from them, isn't it? Very selfish. I only give to the one I think he can give back. And that's how all corruptions begin. Bribery. You give because you want something out of it. But God is telling us to give freely to those who don't count. Those who you think 
they have nothing to give back. This sent us actually to the judgment of the nations as we read in Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31. And Jesus says, you know, when that day comes, when the kingdom of God will be displayed and the judgment day arrives and the shepherd comes, Jesus Christ and the Father, to separate the goats and the sheep, those who have done right and those who have done evil, he will turn to those who have done right and say these words, Welcome, my beloved one. Come and share with me the kingdom of the Father, which has been prepared for you generations ago. Because, listen to this, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you came to see me. When I was orphaned, you were there. When I was widowed, you were there. When I was hungry, you came and saw me. And even when I was naked, you clothed me. You know, he's telling the righteous this. And the righteous turned to him and said, no, I think, Jesus, you are, you, are, you, are, you are mistaken. We have never seen you in prison. When did that happen? It can't be true. You know, we have never seen you in hospital. You have been the one healing people. When did you sleep in hospital? We came to see you. Then they said, we haven't seen you hungry. Apart from the day you are walking in the well in Samaria and you are so thirsty, you went and the disciples went to get food for you. And the, the lady came and you are very thirsty. That was the only time we heard you say, give me a drink. Any other day, we haven't given you anything. We have never seen you naked. It is only you who gives us. You know, we have never fed you. It is you who fed the hungry and fed multitudes, even with the little bread you multiplied and you fed 5,000. We don't remember you doing the things you are telling us we did for you. And you know, Jesus turns again and tells them, you know, friends, the day you did for my little ones, those who needed it, you are doing it for me. So today, when we gather here in this cathedral to give those who can never give back to us, we are giving it unto the Lord. Amen? We are giving it unto the it is him who need, who deserves. So we gather every moment to share out God's resources. And it equals great love. And that's how love becomes a great resource. So the question is, do we love enough? Do we have the right love? Do we care enough? Because care becomes a resource. So when you are counting your resource base, please count if you care you are a resource. If, if you, you have the heart to love, you have a resource. If you have an intellect, a talent, something unique that is only yours, it is a resource you need to bring to the Lord. So let us not limit even the years coming and going forward that our thanksgiving is going to be in form of food and envelopes. I think we need to begin creating innovative ways for those who have talents, how can they use their talents and they bring that day and display the use of those talents by those who need those talents? How can we share love? How can we share our lives together? For resources, is about sharing so that we all have enough. The human selfish spirit tells us, it is mine, I give to whom I want, and when we write our will, we can only write to the ones who are close to us and not any other person. And we have always thought our inheritance is to our loved ones. And I'm only going to create inheritance to my loved ones and nobody else. So that's why when we are mass to ourselves, we are making the rest out and creating empires for our own families and our loved ones, and as many resources go to a few, many will miss out. God is saying, it is time we share it out. Amen? It is time we share it out. So even think about your will. Don't only place the members of your family. Include somebody in need. Include a foundation. Include a charity. 
include some people who will manage some of your resources for those who are less fortunate. And God will bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gathering us here to listen to your word. Thank you for showing us that the resources that are all at display are yours. You are the initiator, the giver, and the one to continue providing. So Lord, we pray as you for provide unto us, give us a heart that mind the well-being and the welfare of those who has less to enjoy. So that when we have it, we share it out. Not only the physical and financial resources help us to share our love, share our moments, share our intellects, share, Lord, the things that you have endowed us with because they are uncountable. So as you help us see and identify them, give us a heart to give it away. For the more we give, the more you give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.